not the most elegant solution, certainly. But given the circumstances, there isn't much else I can do. Oh, but back to what we were talking about earlier. What were we talking about? The wireless display. It's kind of strange if you think about it, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> How do I put it? Well, let's say you write a program that calculates an addition problem for you, all right? So you enter one plus one. The screen will show you two. See? Isn't that strange? Uh, no, not really. Oh, come on now. Of course a caveman like you would think it was strange. You said so just a minute ago. Hmm? <laughs> You're just not getting it, are you? Who calculated one plus one? The, uh, the, the main computer, right? You said it connected to the monitor wirelessly. Yeah, but someone who grew up in a cave wouldn't know that, right? They'd probably think that this thing here, the monitor, is doing the calculating. And once they've decided that, they'll start examining this monitor. They might poke the screen or something. Ah, I see the color changes when I press it here. Then they might investigate the hardware on the inside. Oh, I see. So this wire supplies the power. Eventually, they might even cut the wires. Ah, yes. Just as I expected, when this wire is cut, no results appear. Rush, Therefore, yeah. it must be this device which does the calculations. Oh. But the truth is that, just like you said, the computer is doing the calculating. But these cave people wouldn't know that, because they have no idea that the monitor and the computer are connected wirelessly. So, uh, what are you trying to say? She's gotta stop typing. Nothing, really. It's just, I thought, maybe... What if the relationship between human beings and our brains is like that? Huh? Well, let's say you stick a bunch of electrodes into parts of the brain. A scientist examining the signals they send out might say, Hmm, interesting. So stimulating this part of the brain causes the person to see colors. That must mean this neuron cluster controls that function. Okay, let's see what happens when I cut out this part. Ah, just what I thought. Cutting off this part causes that function to cease. Therefore, human thought processes must occur in the human brain. See? Doesn't it sound the same? Mm. Maybe the brain is just an output device, like this monitor. Maybe our thought processes actually occur somewhere else, in a main body. We just don't know it. We never even think about it. Just like those cave people wouldn't know about wireless communications. We can't imagine that there's some unknown medium that transfers information into our brains where we experience that information as thoughts. Um, the brain is just an output device. The human thought actually occurs somewhere else. In the EDT clusters, fam knew it. <laughs> that's just crazy talk. Maybe that's the cause of Seven's amnesia. If memory is actually stored somewhere else, in some sort of main body somewhere, maybe he hasn't forgotten anything at all. He's just having a difficult time accessing his memories because the monitor, his brain, has been damaged. Huh. I suppose that would explain aphasia and blindsight too. Perhaps they actually can't speak or see. The monitor just isn't functioning properly. I guess people with prosopagnosia could be suffering from the same thing. How does she know about everything? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Oh. Prosopag... what? What? You've never heard of prosopagnosia? No. What is it? Well, put simply, it means a condition where the mind can't distinguish between human faces. In other words, my face would look the same as Clover's or even yours. So they can't remember faces, which is how most people recognize each other. That means that people with prosopagnosia have trouble recognizing even people they're close to. Usually they can make do by associating people with other things. Their voices, their clothes, their hair. Does that mean other people's faces look like uh, blanks? No. No, I don't think so. Well, you've seen monkeys, like in a zoo, right? To you and me, all the monkey faces look the same even though they've obviously got faces. It's almost impossible for a human to distinguish between them. The zoo staff that works with them will learn to identify different monkeys eventually. But you or I couldn't, unless one had a scar or something else to set it apart. Well, that's how people would be to someone with prosopagnosia. Prosopagnosia? Huh. I didn't even know that kind of thing existed. And, um, uh, what were we talking about? The idea that your brain is just an output device. 